Through the course of the war on terror, improvised explosive devices, or IEDs, have caused approximately 70% of all U.S. casualties, both in Iraq and Afghanistan. With IED-related casualties taking such a devastating toll on our troops, drastic action had to be taken. In May of 2007, the Secretary of Defense, Robert Gates, responded by declaring the Mine Resistant Ambush Protected, or MRAP, vehicle program the number one acquisition priority in the Department of Defense because of their ability to stop the deadly effects of the IED blast. Bay War System Center Charleston was called upon to perform the electronics integration for MRAPs, giving the vehicle the ability to operate with U.S. forces taking the fight to the enemy. Captain Red Hoover was Spay War Charleston's commanding officer at the time the nation called in early 2007. His leadership and forward-thinking style ensured that Lean Six Sigma would be embraced as he built the right team for the job and empowered them to make changes that would ultimately save lives. To be able to do 50 vehicles a day, you needed an engineering way to measure our processes and to take, take action, um, and also to work with a good, skilled labor force. High quality uh, you know, products was, was important, and I don't see any way we could have ever achieved that without uh, using Lean Six Sigma. The command provided a black belt to us, execution-wise. One of their officers, who was a recently certified black belt, who was critical on putting a team together to help us on the challenges that were in front of us. Stepping into MRAP, we realized very quickly that we had a burning platform. War fighters were going to die if we did not get results quickly because of a hard time requirement. Walking in, we knew we had to make our production go up by 10 times in only five months. We had to get folks that could work Lean Six Sigma full time as their day jobs to capitalize the expertise that already existed in the workforce. The guys on the work on the floor already had the answers in their head. They just needed a voice to management. We first value stream map the process, which is important. That's the first step you should always take when you uh, do a Lean Six Sigma deployment. Then we did starbursts on there, and underneath of those starbursts where we found areas of opportunity, a lot of rapid improvement events fell out of the mix. From there, we could utilize what we call the benefit and effort analysis. And the bottom line was we looked at what could we get the most benefit out of for the least amount of effort so that we could do events in rapid succession to drive results. The way in which we utilized a rapid improvement event was something that we called a Kaizen Blitz. This is almost Blitzkrieg type tactics. We're very good at looking at, as engineers, at looking at a problem, analyzing it, and figuring out what's wrong. But where do we always fall short? We fall short in the implementation phase. We didn't need to hit any home runs here. That's another mistake a lot of organizations make when they try to, they try to hit one home run instead of hit a series of single, singles in order to win the war. Events that in the past that I had seen take roughly uh, you know, several months were taking us a little over a week to complete. So you have to have that quick, re those quick results to win the workforce. Because if you don't have results quickly and you don't change what the workforce feels, then you haven't changed the culture at all. MRAP trucks upon arrival were moved to the staging area in the north lot. Once integration was ready to receive a truck, logistics moved the truck into the integration building. The truck remained stationary throughout the entire integration process. After the truck completed integration, it was again moved to the north lot until it was ready to be shipped to theater. It was easily identified that the truck spent most of its time in the integration building. The Lean Six Sigma team was tasked to assist with the integration process. Using the value stream map, six key focus areas were identified and a series of multiple pass rapid improvement events were executed to achieve breakthrough improvements. After we identified several waste items on the line, we realized that there had to be a number of transactional events that had to occur for our success. 
An example of that is the non-core competency event that we call going to the Gimba. During this time, we actually visited the manufacturer facility and identified non-core electronic integration items that our technicians here at Spear were performing that were not core to what they had to do on the line. We sat down the program managers, we, we created engineering changes to the contract, and the changes that we found that could be done at the manufacturing facility were done there. We were pushed upstream. As a result, we were able to remove several man hours from the line. We identified other communication constraints, and we were able to give the technicians a standardized truck layout so when they rolled into the facility, they were able to work on them. So as you can see, the transactional events proved to be important in the forefront to remove barriers in order for us to have continuous process improvement. Technicians were spending more than two and a half hours prepping the vehicle prior to C4I integration. So we pushed this portion of non-value added activity off of the production lines by creating flow cells. In these flow cells, they're actually able to tear down the vehicles, deliver equipment to their designated areas earlier in the process, and also welding and grinding and things of that nature. In the end, we were able to get more NRAPs to the warfighter, but also convert non-value added activity into value added activity. A good example of reducing Tim Wood is the turret event. A turret is a protection armor that allows the gunman to fire from the roof of the vehicle. Identified opportunities where waste existed included integration line technicians waiting four hours for the turret installation, turret technicians transporting tools, moving cranes throughout the facility, and the quality assurance or QA process. We ran a rapid improvement event. We brought in subject matter experts from both the line and from logistics. And the end result is a new process by which the logisticians kit out the electronics into these mobile gray carts and then deliver them to our staging area here in the integration facility. And our, our staging area is actually a lean supermarket. So what will happen is the truck will roll into the integration facility and roll onto the line and its electronics will be waiting for it. that we identified as a constraint was a digital rack equipment area. It's a sub-assembly area that provides electronic equipment to the integration line. If they are slow or they have a constraint or a problem arises and that rack is not delivered to the line, that truck is a showstopper so it can't move out and go to theater. We designed the area with the help of all the SMEs into a complete linear flow and then we also identified areas as combines to where once someone pulls that item, the next individual realizes that they need to now prep that station again for the next system. Uh, after about three major uh, RIEs, we actually moved into a, a second and a third layout, and we were able to cut our time down to four hours per build. And with that, a day and a night crew, we can meet our demands of 50 a day. MRAP technicians were spending much of their time searching, gathering, and waiting on tools and materials. Focusing on 5S, the team removed the items that were not needed for production, arranged items in line with the physical workflow, making items easier to locate, and introduced required items to the line that were located elsewhere. A standardized layout, 5S toolbox, point-of-use hardware, hazmat kits, and loom trees were all immediate results of the event. Through process improvement, changes were made regarding the movement of vehicles and services. Inbound trucks now enter through a separate security gate in the north lot where pre-integration tasks such as welding and drilling are completed. The truck then moves to the Terran installation building, and then to integration. Once the truck is fully integrated, it is moved back to the north lot until ready for shipment. The improved process helped to easily identify requirements for individual process steps, 
reduced movement of trucks, and reduced technician wait times. The results of the Lean Six Sigma and how it was apparent on the battlefield was that the warfighter once again gave us a direct response. We took those processes and were able to streamline not only from what we got from the warfighter, but what we were doing with the Lean Six Sigma and putting that together and making it actually streamline the process to the point where we not only met our goals, we exceeded our goals. Coming in as a new CO, it was great to step into a command that already had a well-established lean culture. I feel confident that I can trust the workforce and that the workforce is empowered to make changes that positively impact our ability to deliver capability to the warfighter on a daily basis. In a broader context, we're aggressively putting lean into everything we do because it works. Technology is becoming more expensive and budgets are shrinking. Therefore, we must meet our nation's demands through continuous process improvement to stretch our resources as far as they will go. I'm absolutely positive that lean will lead to that success. The MRAP program was ultimately about saving the lives and limbs of men and women who were put in harm's way every day to protect our freedom. The warfighter demand of 50 MRAPs a day had to be met at all costs. The deployment of Lean Six Sigma combined with the strategy of executing multiple pass rapid improvement events drove results quickly and enabled the program to exceed production objectives, thereby providing a veil of protection to our nation's warfighters in Iraq and Afghanistan. Rapid deployment, cultural change and commitment to excellence in both industrial and transactional processes led to these impressive results.